So some of the basic things we'll talk about are basic building blocks. So this is just, you know, from my perspective, what I've done, what I've done over the years, what I've learned and how I've helped other people. So you always want to, like Stephen Covey says, always begin with the end in mind. Where do you want to go with your network? You want to always make sure that you have a solid foundation of your network. Uh, I've seen a lot of people just hodgepodge, put these things together with uh, slapstick them together, you know, with uh, um, uh, just the basic stuff, which there's nothing wrong with that. You can certainly build a network there, but you kind of got to remember to know where you want to go. Who do you want to build your customers? Do you want residentials? Do you want business customers? Um, what kind of business customers do you want? Are you going to have dedicated internet connections? Uh, these are all kinds of questions that you need to ask yourself because of those kinds of answers will help kind of dictate where you go with your network. So just like anything with a house, you want a good solid foundation that you can keep building and building and building upon and, and then and give yourself enough flexibility. So if you need to change midstream, you can do that because you have a good solid foundation. And I put the comment in there, you know, friends don't let friends bridge their networks. Well, you know, that's one of the things that you definitely, there's a he heated argument. Do you bridge your network or routed your network? I, from the very beginning, I've had our uh, routed network. I've had a great solid network guy from the very beginning and has done wonders for us to stay in there in a routed mode. And now we can keep on layering on now advanced LTE services. We can add on, uh, we can do, um, you know, MPLS, VPL circuits across the entire, uh, our entire network and hook up multiple companies uh, locations across our network. Um, so that's the kind of um, things we do that you just got to bear that in mind. Um, so uh, just, just that's something that's a very interesting topic, hot topic to talk about. Um, so I just want to throw that in there um, and make sure, like I said, you build for your customers. Like I already talked about, you want to know what customers you're going after and then make sure that your network can just easily expand. So if we add, we're looking to add six more towers to us, it's not a big deal. We just bolt them on, add them into the OSPF, uh, add routers to the, the towers and just keep on rocking and rolling because we have a pattern, we have a structure, we know exactly what to do. So. Um, part of these network building blocks, we also talk about investing in automation. I'm really, really big on this kind of stuff because even from the very beginning when I, had, when I was just an IT guy, um, I, I believed in putting the building a rock solid network. I don't want to be called at two or three o'clock in the morning. I don't want to have to worry about certain aspects. In this case, you know, having a great solid bit of WISP billing system. So, you know, if people are not paying. Well, we turn them off if they're not payments. I mean, I know a lot of people struggle with that. And how do you log in? Okay, I got to log into the radio. I got to log into the router and turn them off. At midnight by 1230, if you have not paid and you're past your delinquency time period, system automatically just shuts you off. You pay the bill, boom, you're back online because uh, it turns you back on. So those are the things, you know, kind of automation things that I love to see and that I, it saves an ordinate amount of time. So there's all those kinds of of you know, you know turning them off uh, making automatic payments we don't have to worry about that kind of stuff yeah it costs money but i save time and i probably collect way more money and, and do a better manage my money by having automation uh, network monitoring solutions uh nms to alert for outages i know a lot of wisp just they don't monitor their network i, I mean i do and i have i actually have like two or three different ways of monitoring my network i want to know if now network is down part of my network is down I want to know if the tower's down, what's, you know, I have a router down or not. I even monitor my business clients. So I get alerts. I'm looking at a board over here right now on my, my wall that shows me what's up in the status of running on the network right now. So uh, another thing I know that we do is we are and have had this philosophy in a long time, you know, don't get ridiculous on your coverage areas. We keep, and we have both what we can consider our big core towers and our small micropot towers. So to us, a micropot tower, small tower, in my example, would be something like a Rome 25G, 50 foot to 100 foot, maybe servicing a local area, maybe a mile of, of coverage. And it maybe have anywhere from, you know, two or three clients all the way up to 50. My biggest micropot has almost 100 clients, which is ridiculous. We're not like, where the heck did this come from? <laughs> uh, that one was kind of uh, interesting and funny. Um, but, you know, so we have our big towers generally service no more than five miles and our micro pop service is generally no more than one mile. Uh, one of my biggest towers I have actually has about eight micro pops and underneath that they have several 
Pico pops, so just little house relays, neighborhood relays uh, that we do. So that's kind of what the example is over here is just be realistic in your coverages. I mean, if you need to shoot 20 miles, I get it, I understand it, but you got to bear in mind if you have a connection that's weak, long distance, your access point is going to dumb itself down to the, its weakest connection. So you got to bear that in mind as you grow and add, add onto your network and expand, it starts adding on um, complexity, starts worrying about radio frequencies that, so, you know, one section of my, the Northeast section of my network, I mean, I probably got four big towers and probably about 20 small micropot towers. It gets a little wild and crazy. And we're talking within probably that's within a six or seven mile radius. We got pretty tall trees around us, rolling elevation changes. So it gets a little wild and crazy. So just be realistic in your coverage zones, your coverage areas.